Hey, welcome back to Robert Nauer Unfiltered, and this is part two of the village of Eastport and Moultrie Creek that the village is trying to sell right now as one of the first projects where they'll be selling residential lots and homes over near the high school, the new high school. Uh, you saw, if you watched part one, then you know what I'm talking about. Now, things to consider. What you didn't see in part one, and what I'm going to explain right now, is what I know having lived here for 17 years, going on 18. Let's start off with Moultrie Creek, which is the first, I would call it a subdivision. People don't call them subdivisions, but that's really what they are. It's a little subdivision of that entire Eastport area. And it ha has only really, it's a, it's a big circle. And on the right-hand side, driving into Moultrie Creek and driving out of Moultrie Creek, uh, those are all homes that will back up either to a fence or to the golf course. The homes in the middle all back up to other houses, to other lanais, if you want to call it a lanai or a birdcage, whatever. So, but the, but the one thing that most people won't tell you, my guy did, but the one thing that most people won't tell you when you buy over there, and I guess they really wanted to get rid of it first so they could start moving towards Eastport, is that it's directly across the road from the high school stadium, football stadium. And when the football games and or cheerleading, whatever activities are going on in the high school stadium, trust me, you will hear it. Uh, but only on those nights that they're actually, in days that they're actually having games. So I guess either Friday or Saturdays, you will hear a lot of activities in band and other things, the band's playing. So don't expect to be, if you buy into that area, don't expect to be sitting out on your beautiful bird cage that you're going to spend many, 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 many thousands of dollars for and have an enjoyable evening, unless you just simply enjoy listening to high school football games and bands from afar. Um, so that's one thing. The noise, you're going to be so close to it that several days out of the week you might not really enjoy your backyard, your lanai. You, you probably want to stay inside. And then, of course, the lots that are closest to the fence line where the high school is, and you'll see that if you go over there, you look at the map. Those lots are about eight to nine thousand dollar premiums on the lots, and the reason for that is because the noise will be coming directly in that direction. But even if you're over on the golf course side in a ninety thousand dollar lot, you're going to be getting the same noise. <laughs> it doesn't matter which side you're on, the noise travels. I get how many thousands of feet a second? 1,500, 1,600, I don't know, something like that. Sound, speed of sound. So you're not going to get away from the noise. And it's kind of like being near the turnpike. I live in Deluna and, you know, I, and I'm about two miles from the turnpike and I can hear the turnpike every evening when I go out. It's like a constant roar. And when the train going down by 301 is going, you can hear the clickety-clack and constant roar of a 300, 400 uh, car train, too. So, so anyway, back to Moultrie Creek. It's a very nice area. It's very well laid out. I have no issues with the infrastructure. I got to tell you, the, the, the villages build fantastic infrastructure. And ultimately, that's Rainey, Rainey and his crew do a great job clearing the land and putting the infrastructure in. And they're building the country clubs, they're building the recreation centers, they put the roads and the sewers and the electric and fiber optic cable and all that crap in. 
But what they haven't put is the shopping centers and any shopping. Now, in the old days, the villages, when they planned for a new development, like Osceola Hills, as an example, where I used to live, and I should have never have sold there. I used to live on Deskin and had a beautiful home, custom built home, cinder block, three and a half car garage. Absolutely beautiful. Plus, I also had a tandem in my third car garage that went a total of 46 feet back. Wow. I could fit one, two, three, four cars in it. But I decided to turn the tandem car garage into a workshop. So, Osceola Hills, uh, for the most part, except for Everglades, I'll back up, Everglades too. When they built the Finney area, the Everglades area, the Osceola Hills area, what the villages did correctly, keyword correctly, is they put all of the shopping in too that the people in homes would need. Duh! Why the fuck would you not do that, right? Well, they're not doing that anymore. They have what's called designated areas on their plat for commercial business, commercial shopping. For example, where the temporary concrete plant is nearest to Coleman Federal Prison, or Coleman Correctional Custody Unit, that, that's a bullshit name for a federal prison. It's the largest prison in the entire United States, and it's camouflaged on, for the most part by trees. But it's there, has more prisoners, has more land area as a federal prison than anywhere else. But that's not the topic of this. The topic is what's going on in Moultrie Creek, East Lake, where they're planning on building closest to 470 and... <clears throat> And, and ultimately, Central Parkway is really nothing more than 470. They just redesignated the name. Oh, it sounds prettier if it's Central Parkway. It's 470. Let's just face it. It's 470. It's 470 when you get off the fucking turnpike. It's 470 when you take it through, even though it's called Central Parkway. It's 470 on the other side of 301 when you transit through. But in the center of the villages, we're going to call it Central Parkway. What a crock of shit. Anyway, that's a marketing kind of scheme, I guess. So the um, area been there recently, it is fucking inundated. And, and oh, don't even go there on a day before, a couple of days before a holiday because everybody who lives in Finney and South and over in um, Lake Denon and that area, they're all flocking to Everglades to buy their stuff because there simply isn't sufficient grocery stores in this area. Now, they had the option of building a grocery store. They chose not to. Why the fuck would they choose not to? People really think about this. So, if you buy very early on into the lower Eastport area of Moultrie Creek and... and you're not going to ha have anywhere to go shop. The next closest place to go shopping, I don't even say that, is about 13 miles down 470 going east where you have a Winn-Dixie and a Publix out on Highway 27. So your only options are if you buy into Moultrie Creek, into the area near the high school <clears throat> is you've got to get in your car and you damn sure ain't going to get in your golf cart <laughs> and you got to go up to Everglades okay and spend all the gas and all the time going there or you got to go 470 over to Highway 27 which is even further to go to the Publix and the Winn-Dixie that's over there oh and that Winn-Dixie is now in Aldi's all of the Winn-Dixies have been bought out in Florida. They're all going to be Aldi's, a different, because Aldi's wanted to expand their variety of what they offer. So they're just putting their name on it. It'll basically be Winn-Dixies with the Aldi's brand on the outside. And a lot of other Aldi products from Germany and around the world that they source. So there will be no more Winn-Dixie. Winn-Dixies are a thing of the past. They will be changing. So, 
really you have no shopping you have no small shopping stores you will have no restaurants except those that are in the country club area that they're building i don't even know if they're going to have that i'm not sure uh, so just think about that part two when you're thinking about buying in eastport until they actually get eastport and eastport's not all that close from multi rig creek if you're going by golf cart or by car, you've got about four and a half miles that you will have to travel in order to get to Eastport. So that's not close. So there's not, what I'm saying is, and I'm saying it in a slow roundabout way, the villages just has given up on putting shopping infrastructure in places for retail stores embedded in and around neighborhoods. Like for example, when you went to Mallory, Mallory when in one of the middle older sections, a very nice place too, I might add, Mallory was one of the places hit in 2001 by a tornado that tore down all the sick built homes in Mallory. The only ones left were the cinder block. That was back when Jeb Bush was governor. And so you just go down from Mallory to Lake Sumter Landing, okay, you've got shopping there. What used to be Sweet Bay's is now uh, Winn-Dixie, which will soon be Aldi's. <clears throat> so, they always built a small shopping area as they built lots and lots of subdivisions, lots and lots of little villages. They're not doing that anymore. And so you really need to think, do I really want to buy into an area where they're not putting sufficient retail shops and little places for restaurants to be so I don't have to, as a customer, drive very far to go out at night and eat if I don't want to cook at home? And I got to tell you, sports fans, my wife and I have decided we're eating, we're making all of our meals here. We enjoy it. I enjoy it. I takes me about 30 minutes. I buy all the ingredients, I buy the food, I, I prep the meals, I do it all. And I've been cooking for God knows since I was a child, but I enjoy it. My wife doesn't enjoy it so much, but we make our meals here, why? Because it's so goddamn expensive to eat out anymore. Have you looked at the prices? In almost all the restaurants, even at Cody's, for example, the, the, the uh, rotisserie chicken and salad, we used to get that for $6.99. No shit. $6.99, $7.99 uh, two and a half years ago at Cody's. Now it's $11.98. $11.98, what used to be $6.99. That's, that's just phenomenally expensive. And that's just for a piece of chicken, a little sweet, tiny sweet potato, and a side salad in the bowl. Almost every other place in and around the villages, everything is expensive except for Culver's. Culver's isn't that bad. So we've decided when we looked at our bill, we were spending almost, almost $2,000 a month eating out. I said, do you know how much steak, how much flank steak, how much hamburger, how much fish I can buy for $2,000, you know, and make a meal at home? So we've decided to do that ourselves with a nice kitchen, with a nice induction range we have, and just make our meals here. Okay, let's go back to Moultrie Creek and Eastport again. Yes, it's gonna be very nice once it's finished out in about two years. It's gonna be very nice. And then they'll start building the shopping center and the Publix, because the, the Morris family has agreements with Publix to build everything and everywhere around here, except for the non, because they won't be putting any Aldi's that don't already exist on village property. First of all, Aldi's isn't gonna pay that price. That's why all the Aldi's you see around the entire village area are all on non-village property. So all you're ever gonna have is Publix on village property. But it just seems that they're not going to be putting sufficient retail shopping and food infrastructure in the area. 
except in the buildings that they're building themselves for the recreation centers, the country clubs. There you'll have a restaurant that'll be pricey to go eat at. And don't tell me that it ain't pricey because if you go to Sawgrass, Sawgrass is a fucking arm and a leg. Absolute fucking arm and a leg eating at Sawgrass. So by the time, you can't even get out of Sawgrass with a hamburger and a beer for two people for less than 40 bucks, assuming that you properly tip the servers and the people there. So, yeah, the Villages is not what it used to be. It's great as far as the home quality, fantastic. It's great as far as the infrastructure, fantastic. It's great as far as the layout and, and the executive golf courses and the rec facilities, fantastic. Ain't no place in all of America that is as good as the villages. But I look at things with an open mind and a perspective of having been here for 17 years. When we first came here, when the villages had only 55,000 people in it, and they were just starting to build out colony. At that time, you could go to Katie Bell's, which doesn't exist anymore, and you could have a glass of wine for $1.50. You could have anything, well drinks during happy hour for two bucks. You could go see a show. You could get a nice steak dinner for $10.99 and then have your glass of wine. So, and, and, and for two people, it would all be under $25. Well, now that ain't the case. Now you're lucky if you get out for 75 to 100 somewhere. So yes, 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 it's all more expensive. Life is more expensive. Blame it on the pandemic, I guess. But you know what? For many of you and us on fixed incomes, and I'm not chintzing, I, my wife and I made a lot of money when we were working and we saved a lot of money. <laughs> we spent money like crazy too because we thought we would always have it. We're on a fixed income now. It ain't hurting, but in order to preserve our income, we're making the majority of all of our meals now at home. So just think when you think about buying in the Eastport area, one of the questions is how noisy is it going to be where I'm at? i.e. because of the high school. You really need to consider that. Number two, shopping. There isn't any, and there won't be for about two years. It, the earliest any grocery store will be available, minimum two years out. You really need to think about that when you're thinking about purchasing in the Eastport area. Where are you gonna, what is this? Who are you gonna call, Ghostbusters? right? You're going to have to hop in your car, waste a lot of gas, driving up and back, and oh, there's going to be a shitload more traffic too on all those roads and on Central Parkway. Any of you that have not driven Central Parkway right lately, you need to. It's a clusterfuck. <laughs> and one of the things that really has bothered me is the roundabouts, they went from two lanes going around the roundabouts, which handles more traffic, to only one lane going around some of the roundabouts, keyword some. And that makes it difficult for semi trucks, for big dump trucks, for landscaping trucks, all the trucks that got to go around roundabouts, much more difficult in the new Eastport area. Don't really think the villages in the county thought that through very well. They should have made it wider for traffic flow. And the only other real negative about the, the part of the villages where we live and south of Warm Springs is the fact that they've given up on multimodal paths. From the old section over to Osceola Hills, over to 466A and beyond, they always had multimodal paths. You could take multimodal paths from 466A all the way up to 44 at Osceola Hills. And the nice thing about the multimodal paths was they were very wide. 
You can have bikes and golf carts and pedestrians walking, getting their morning exercise, going hither and yon. So all the way from Havana all the way to 44, you had multimodal paths. No more. Now they put all those fucking golf carts right on the road with you and with the traffic and with the semis. And if you think that having a golf cart on a road with a semi going through is safe, you are kidding yourselves. Now, why did they do that? Money. They didn't want to spend the money for the asphalt and the bedding. They didn't want to do it. So they're saving millions and 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 millions of dollars in roadbed and asphalt for non-existent multimodal paths that they'll never have to build again because they just said, you know, hey, if you get hit by a tr car or a truck or something and you die in a golf cart, hey, that's on you because you got to remember the speed limit for golf carts in the state of Florida and in the villages is only 20 miles an hour. And I, God knows, I don't know how many times I see golf carts doing upwards of 40 and even 45 in the new lithium high energy battery packs that they've got on some of these electric golf carts. And so far, Wildwood Police Department is the only police department in the entire area not ticketing golf carts for excessive speeding over the 20 mile an hour limit. That's Chief Randall Palmer. And Chief Palmer chooses not to enforce the laws of the state of Florida. So that's a good thing. I guess for if you're a golf cart owner, that is a good thing because Chief Palmer does not enforce the laws of the state of Florida regards to golf carts. You want to do 35 miles per hour in a golf cart? Hey, do it. You're not going to get a ticket. But if you're a car doing 40 and a 35, you're going to get a ticket. But if a golf cart is going right alongside of you at 45 miles an hour and you're doing 45, guess who's getting the ticket? The car, not the golf cart. You don't believe me? Get out there and watch. When he tickets, he's going to be ticketing cars. Golf carts are going to be on the roads too. So I don't know. But there's a lot of issues with the way the village has morphed and altered its building processes for roads, not for homes, for roads, and the ability to get around with golf carts and bicycles. It's more dangerous in the newer areas because of putting them all on the roads. You don't believe me? Have any of you out there in a village land ever come across bicyclists, 20, 30 bicycles, and you're trying to get around them? Oh my God, it's like a fucking nightmare. And many of the bicyclists just do this. Fuck you. Okay, I understand the rules in the state of Florida allow if there's two lanes, the bicyclist to take up one lane, not two lanes. But there's issues. There are people that just utterly disregard the DMV rules in the state of Florida. And so it, it, so by forcing all of the bicyclists and all the golf carts in the new Eastport area onto the roads, it's going to create more traffic incidents and deaths and issues. Um, but the homes are well built. In fact, that's the, other to the last topic I'm going to touch on for today. All of the new homes in the Eastport area are the new precast concrete, which I live in. I live in a precast right here, which will withstand winds of up to 300 firm, consistent miles per hour. How great for insurance. Man, you don't even need insurance unless your house blows up from gas, then you do need insurance catches on fire due to the gas explosion, due to all the gas lines, due to all the gas ranges, due to all the gas water heaters. Never had that issue over in Osceola Hills and Colony, they were all electric. But here and on and for the rest of perpetuity, the villages has chosen to go gas because they get special favored pricing on the gas. And so everything's gas. In this house that I have, I took the gas out and I had it converted to electric. Very expensive, but I don't like gas. I hate gas. Gas is extremely dangerous if it's not maintained. So another food for thought. Why did they do that? I don't know. But nevertheless, all the new homes in 
Eastport in the area south of McClure is all precast concrete construction. They will be extremely sturdy. You'll never ever have to worry about a strong storm or a hurricane or even a tornado. The roofs are tied down really well. The homes are constructed really well. Fabulous construction. Great job villages in DZ Concrete because DZ Concrete is expanding their plant. They've expanded. That's one of the reasons that you've seen a lot of the home plans on the village website go away. Like they no longer build the Zinnia. The Zinnia was a beautiful house inside, just like the Ivy and others. They're all going away because they've had to convert all of their plans to the new precast concrete modular construction. So all homes from here on out, from south of McClure and all the way to where the village is, is all going to be precast concrete homes with the exception of the cheap, cheap vinyl stick built villas, patio homes if you want to call them that. So those homes will always get annihilated by a tornado. Tornado comes in, kiss your ass goodbye, baby, because if you live in a stick built chair, your house is gone. But if you are in one of the new precast concrete constructed homes, you will never ever have to worry. You can go inside, sip your coffee,